There's a quicker way to create nodes. You can use the um, the brush. Just like that. If you drag a lot faster, like this, you end up with quite a lot, lot of gaps in between. These gaps are great, great rhythms that you can use. And you can also switch to a different um, snap setting and create some effects on 16th level. Now all you need to do is just make this one a little bit quieter or delete that line. Let's delete it and let's listen to the outcome. If you think there are too many wrong notes involved, then there is another little trick that you can use to make sure that all the notes are part of a certain key. All you need to do is select all of the notes, press Ctrl H, Ctrl H brings up the transpose velocity window, and then do choose scale correction, not transpose, we don't need to transpose, and um, pick a key, let's say the key of C. If you wanted to, you, go, you can go for C-sharp, D, and so on. Well, let's stick with the key of C for now. Or oh, let's do the key of D, why not? Key of D, major scale. You can choose between all of those scales here, but let's choose major. Let's do do, exit this one. And then if you don't believe me that everything is in the key of D, we can just go back to our pitch colors, which we've set up before, so that all the blue colors are notes that are in the key of D. Let's give you another listen. Okay. Obviously we could change the um, scale used in the Control H dialog to, um, to a D. Let's go for a pentatonic scale. Yeah, let's go for a pentatonic scale. Do. It's a major pentatonic. Okay, oh, let's change it to, um, to a blue scale. Do. Got two more nodes, F, let's come in, and also F again. After getting a bit of a feel for the editor, let's start having a look at the main features. I'll pick up the pencil and I'll enter the notes the way I like them to go into the editor. I'll press the 4 key for 8th note. 3 key. 8 notes again. 4 key. 4 key. And I'll go for a minimum. I'll press number 2. I'll press 8th note, I press 3, I press 4 on the keyboard, so I press 4 again, and I press 3 again for a quarter note, and then finally, Let's change the pitch of some of the notes. You can, for example, just pick up the notes and move them up to wherever you want to move them. 
This also works if you want to move a few notes at the same time. Notice that um, while you're moving the notes up, keep an eye on this field up here. While the notes selected, it says now it says transpose one, two semitones, three semitones, four semitones, and so on. And it all it also tells you where you're just about to place the notes, which is in this field up here. This note here starts in bar three. Beat 4, first 16th note, which is ac exactly on beat 4. Now, if I want to move the note up, you can see I can transpose it so on so far. Let's say I want to transpose it up an octave. And if I move it forward a little bit, you can see it goes to bar 3, beat 3, third 16th note, which is um, the and in beat 3. Exactly on beat. 3, B2 and, on 2 and, on B2 and so on. I'll move the note back. A quicker way of recording just go goes just like this. If a note selected and you open the editor, then you can use your left and right arrows to go along the um, melody line. Like that. And then if you want to Change the position of that note, you can press Ctrl and the arrows. I'm going to use up first to move the note up, or the down arrow to move the note down. While I'm doing this, I keep my finger on the Ctrl key all the time, and you can also then go forward or backwards. Or this works for a few notes as well. I keep my finger on Shift and then use my right arrow key to select a few more notes and now I press control the top arrow and I move all of those notes up this one would work and then you can play the tune obviously you can move all of those notes backwards and forwards as well. Or even select all the notes pressing Ctrl A and then transpose the whole melody up or down. Or move it by a little bit. Let's go back to what the melody was like before. Press Ctrl Z. By the way, selecting and deselecting works just in exactly the same way as it did in the arrangement window. If you select a few nodes, you can just do it by drawing a rectangle around them. And if you want to add to this, you press Shift and select more nodes. And if you want to deselect some of the nodes out of this selection, then you just need to press Shift again and deselect the nodes. With those notes selected, you can do the same tricks as we did before. You can also change any of the notes parameters in the info line, this line up here. If we pick a note like this one here, we can see it starts in bar 3 on beat 2. It's one beat long. The pitch is C3. And the note has apparently been played with a velocity of 127. Velocity off is always 64, it's a default. And we've recorded this note on channel 3. Now what could we change? We could change the pitch of the note just by right-clicking on the mouse. A left-click would lower the pitch again. You can also double click in this area and let's type C2, moves the note down to there. We can change the length of the note, again by right clicking or you can just double click and type in a number, three beats. If you want the note to go longer than a bar then you just do let's say six beats long. And if you want to add a sixteenth note to it. Just right click in that field or double click, sorry, double click, do 
six beads and four sixteenth note long, which is the same as seven beads. So let's do six beads and three sixteenth note, which is similar to saying six beads and three quarters of a beat. You can also change the position of the note. I'm left clicking here. Let's go in 16th note steps. And you can also go for bars as well. Or you can just double click again. Let's type bar 4, B2, third 16th note. And there's the note. And if you want to add a few ticks to it, let's do bar 3, beat 1, beat 2, sorry, beat 1, and first 16th note. And let's add 2,000 ticks to it, then the note appears there. Let's move the note back to where it was before. It was one beat long, and the position of the note I change with control. And then I quickly need to get rid of the ticks. Let's see what happens if you want to change the values of a few notes at the same time. In order to do this, I'm going to hide the toolbar by pressing F12. And I'll select these notes here. The info line now has um, blue, blue information, orange information for single notes and blue information for a few notes. And if I want to change the velocity of these notes, I just type in a new value, 80. And you can see down here that the velocity has changed for all the different notes. If I change the length of the notes, now they've all become a bit smaller. They've all changed the length by 1 16th note. And if I want to change the position, let's say I want to move it back by a bead. So all of the notes have gone back by one bead. So this is a relative value here. It's not an absolute value. So if I do a change, it represents a relative change because this note here would be on, on beat 3, second 16th note, which has got nothing to do with the figure you can see here. And you can also change the channel of those um, five notes. You could place them onto channel 4, for example. Now this number here hasn't got any effects unless the, um, the track channel is set to any. Let's quickly check whether all the notes are on channel 4. This one isn't. Channel 4. This one. Channel 4. That one. Channel 4. And this one also. Channel 4. Let's play them back. And you can hear you've got a different sound for those notes. And in the meantime, I've switched the um, channel for this track to any and now depending on what um, channels these notes are set to play on um, the signal is either going through your channel 3 on the universal sound module or through your channel 4 on the universal sound module.